Hey everyone, this time I thought let's take a look on the managed OCI MySQL service and also the Heatwave cluster, what's available uh, for MySQL. So I'm not sure if, if you've noticed, but the managed MySQL has been available in OCI for quite a while. And also the Heatwave cluster, which is a in-memory query accelerator with some built-in machine learning capabilities. So today I'll first create the MySQL database in OCI, then let's uh, see a little bit what functionality it has. Just uh, this week in December, they released the read replicas for MySQL service. So let's see if we can provision one read replica. Then we are going to provision the Heatwave cluster. And finally, I'll run a, a small test just to show Heatwave capabilities and how it benefits you yeah, if you are going to use it. So let's give it a go and see how it goes. So we'll start uh, with creating the MySQL instance in OCI. Uh, this time I'm, I'm logged to my OCI tenancy and here from console, uh, this time I want to go to Oracle database, but databases and under here I have MySQL. So I'll just go here and from here you get some prereqs. Uh, they are pretty simple. So I, I've already done those. I won't go into details, but basically you have to have BCN and policies. Uh, and then after that, I can just create the MySQL database. So clicking the create database system, I'll get the prompt. Uh, I'll just give it my database name. Uh, and let's give it the same description. And then I can choose standalone database, high availability with three MySQL instances or Heatwave, which we are going to uh, create this time. Uh, then I'll pro uh, pro provide the ad admin username. Let's just give uh, my name, then the uh, password. I'll just retype it here. Uh, now I have the password, admin password, then configure networking. So if you, are not, if you don't have networking in the same compartment, just gonna switch the compartment. I know how I have my VCN here. Uh, and then I have my private subnet here uh, in the same uh, compartment where my network com uh, components are. So I'll choose those only one AD in this region. I'm not gonna choose fault domain. I'll let uh, OCI handle that. Then configure hardware. So here you have to uh, pick a correct shape. So when, when you provision Heatwave cluster, you have to have a shape that supports Heatwave. So I'm just gonna pick the, uh, the default one, what it uh, suggests. Then data storage size, I'm just gonna keep it as is. Um, configure backups. So we could enable automatic backups, which we are gonna do. And then the backup retention. Uh, let's use just the default seven days. Enable point in time restore, okay. Let's leave it as is. And then I could further tune the backup window if I would like to do, but I'll just leave it empty for now. Let's see what's under advanced options. So here a little bit more, a uh, little bit more options, deletion plan, uh, what happens when, when I delete it, or if, if I can protect uh, the database system uh, altogether about deletion, configuration, so, a little bit more configuration options here. Grass recovery, uh, if it's enabled or not. Then management, uh, maintenance window, networking, I could define a host name or IP address, then the ports, I'll just leave all as uh, default. And also data import, which is pretty cool. You can import the data uh, at the same time as, as you're creating the database. So that's nice. Uh, you would need to create a pre-authenticated URL for uh, for uh, for object storage bucket, uh, but that's it. I'll I'll just create the database, and then after it's created, we can see about the read replicas, and then also uh, on the heatwave cluster. So I'll just uh, click create, and then the database uh, starts to be created, and I'll pause the video, and then once it's created, uh, I'll I'll continue from there. Okay, so that took like uh, 15 minutes to get the MySQL uh, database created with this uh, heatwave shape. So if, if I look now from the console, I can see some generic information like uh, 
uh, obviously the the OC and then shape, OCPU count, memory, heatwave cluster, high availability, all that stuff I can see from here. Placement details, then the endpoint, so the IP address, which we are going to use like when we test the heatwave cluster, then MySQL port, uh, then also read replicas information here, deletion plan. I, I think this is pretty informative compared like uh, uh, DPCS uh, database, the Oracle database. So I think this is pretty good. The Oracle database has obviously a lot of information as well, but I think like this is, I, I think just neatly done. So I like it. And then on the left side, we can see all the different things here. Endpoints. So if I click endpoints, it'll show uh, what kind of endpoint, read, write, primary database system, uh, address. And I think once we create the read replica, we should see a new new endpoint here. Mm. So let's give it a go uh, here. There's uh, some restrictions. You have to have four or more OCPUs. So we have 16 because we have the heatwave shape now. And I'll just create read replica. Let's give it like a, a name for it. Uh, read one. Uh, what's under advanced deletion plan again, so we could just enable that, but let's just create the read replica and see uh, how long it takes to create and if there's any issues. So I'll just click this and then I'll pause the video and then we'll continue after it's created. Okay, the read replica is now created. It took around 15 minutes and just a fact check on, I and I had it in the screen earlier as well, that uh, read replicas obviously have been already available, but the new feature which is available is read replicas with load balancer. So now, now you can create the read replicas and then have only one endpoint with the network load balancer, and that redirects then traffic to read replicas. I think it's not available in this region yet. I'm in Toronto region, so probably uh, it'll come out later, but that should be the, the feature then. As you can see now here, uh, I have the endpoint here, uh, dot once 76 for this read replica. And I think if we would have the load balancer, then this would uh, just have one, one address what to connect against. And if we look endpoints, Oh, there's actually a, yeah, this is nice. So it's available, it automatically creates it. It's pretty cool. I didn't even know, I thought you have to uh, choose it, but it seems, so seems like uh, we get one uh, endpoint for the replica itself, and then uh, another one for the uh, load balancer. So we could use this 170 as a as an endpoint for all our, let's say read replica connections if I would have multiple. Pretty nice, pretty cool. And seems that's how that's how it works. So all the replicas I can I can see here. So I can also uh, just delete. So I'm I'm just gonna delete this read replica because we are not gonna use it, just showing how it works. And then after this we are gonna create the heat wave cluster. So I'll just go here, three dots, delete are you sure you want to delete it? Let's just delete it. Now it's gonna delete. And I think um, at the same time, it's gonna also delete the uh, load balancer. So let's let's see what happens. Uh, I'm gonna pause the video and then once it's done, uh, we'll continue with the heat wave cluster creation. Okay, now the read replica got deleted. And if you look on the endpoints, also, the load balancer uh, is deleted. So I did some reading, and when you delete the last read replica, then also the load balancer gets automatically deleted. So now if I would create a new re replica, then I would get a new load balancer as well. Uh, okay, but now on to the, let's say, exciting part. So heatwave, we'll just go here, heatwave, and we can see uh, heatwave is disabled because database system is in updating states. State okay, I had actually just uh, finished the updating. I think it was because of the read replica. So now I can just add a heatwave cluster. So let's click this one. Uh, 
So obviously we have the correct shape. So it's supported. Let's just uh, add one node. So I could add multiple nodes obviously here and then memory just using the default ones and I'll click the heat wave cluster and we can see it's gonna uh, it's it's creating that now so i'll pause the video again and then once it's created we'll take a look uh what's next so what i what i have now is the heat wave cluster it's created uh it's active and if i scroll down here i can see this uh cluster node one okay it's active now I can always go to work requests and see uh, what's happened. So you can see the previous actions, create replica, read replica, delete replica, and then this heat wave cluster. So if we look, it took like eight minutes or so to create. And now, now I have it active here. So what I'm going to do next is that uh, let's just run this uh, quick start, uh, what, uh, what they have in the documentation. So this airport, DB Analytics Quick Start. So first we are gonna load the data set uh, to the MySQL database, and then we are gonna enable the heat wave, uh, basically load the load the data to heat wave, and then we can uh, check how the queries behave when the, let's say the heat wave engine is enabled and when it's disabled, what's the difference? So I already have my uh, shell uh, opened here. Let's put it here and it's a jump server where I have the MySQL shell installed. And if you remember, I created the admin user earlier. So I'm just going to use that to log in. Uh, and yeah, I've logged in uh, with my admin user. And then what I'll, what I'll do first, I'll just uh, load the data set, which I downloaded on the jump server and extracted. So there's a specific commands in the documentation. I'll put the documentation link in the, in the description. So you can also try it out. Uh, I'll just paste the first command. So this is going to load the data. And you can see 16 threads and it's going to take a while. So I'll just pause the video again and then continue once this is loaded. Okay. I have the tables now loaded. Uh, as you can see, it took like five minutes. And next I'm gonna switch to uh, SQL. And I'm gonna load the Heatwave uh, Airport DB to, uh, or the Airport DB to Heatwave. So there's this command, uh, which basically uh, the Heatwave load, then it's just gonna call the database and then let's run it. And then after it's loaded, I got a couple of a uh, couple of queries based on the examples what I'm gonna run. So you can see 14 tables loaded uh, successfully. Uh, took like 30 seconds, so not too long on this data set. Uh, and it's nice output here. Uh, no tables failed, columns loaded, and then obviously duration. Uh, so next, just gonna use the airport DB. So switch on that. And then in the example, I can yet run the explain plan. So for the first query and this one, I'm just running this because here in the end uh, or here in the middle, you see this using a secondary in engine rapid. So that means that it's, uh, it's using the heat wave uh when I, when i run the select statement so red, let's uh, run this same statement and see how long it takes so you can see it returns the rows in 0 0.09 seconds uh, i can disable the uh, secondary engine so the heat wave so there's this command set session, use secondary engine off. So just running that, all good. And now I'll just run the same, same query. And it should take a little bit longer, I think around like 10 seconds or so. So you can already see it's, it's slower 
and yeah, 8.6 seconds. So obviously here in this just small example, Heatwave uh, cluster seems to be really, really good for these queries. There's another example. I'll just run this query. It's uh, from the same example. They had other uh, other queries that we can use. So I'll run this query first without the uh, without the Heatwave uh, engine. So it's just gonna put this running here, and then after it's completed, I'll uh, enable the secondary engine again, and then run the same query. So it took like uh, 52 seconds to run that query. So now we'll just put the, like I said, the engine uh, back on, secondary engine, heatwave engine, it's enabled. Then let's run the same query and see how long it takes. So 52 seconds and wow, just 0 0.4 seconds. So, so it came up immediately. So obviously it looks like heatwave cluster. It's uh, really useful for specific use cases. So I urge you, like, if you're interested, give it a test, like it's this easy. So just uh, uh, basically just uh, putting the same, uh, same shape and as, as uh, or provision the shape what the heat wave requires. And then after you provision that, you can just provision the uh, correct amount of heat wave clusters and then try it out with these examples, or maybe you will you'll have your own data set and you wanna test it out with that. Uh, I think it's definitely interesting. And then not just that, but then the whole price performance, what MySQL gives, so, it's really cheap compared, let's say, to Oracle database or autonomous database. So obviously not on the same level as autonomous database, which uses Exadata. But if you are looking like really cost effective uh, solution, I think MySQL and Heatwave might be something worth looking on to. And as you saw, like uh, the whole provisioning process is, is really easy as well for the actual MySQL database. So give it a go and hope you liked the video. Uh, subscribe if you like this. I'll, I'll just uh, keep on making some new videos, hopefully which interest you as well. Uh, thanks again for watching and see you.